hide all the insecurities. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. About to get bumpy. You guys keep derailing me. I did, and I did it endearingly. <laughs> Will's got jokes. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Will is the Sarlacc pit. I love beer. I like that too. Pork broccoli. Snowflake. Hail Baphomet. Thank you guys for listening. I learned a lot. Keep up the good work. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Jimmy Curve. Thank you for tuning in and listening. Thank you for downloading. Thank you for following us on Twitter and liking us on Facebook and uh, making your whole family subscribe to our us on iTunes. And how else do people find us? Buying t-shirts. Buying t-shirts, which we are still selling. So that, if, this to my family, basically. If, <laughs> mostly just to Josh's family. But if you're still one of those three X's out there wandering around without a Jimmy Curb t-shirt... <laughs> We've got him. <laughs> I am the host of the Jimmy Curve, Jimmy Putnam. With me, as always, are my co-host, is my co-host, Joshua Vossler. Hello, everybody. I'm down to one co-host and my sidekick, Will Doherty. This is the only promotion I'll ever receive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we are happy to be here today. Hey, everybody. Uh, we've got the, the Jimmy Curve impression contest coming up. So be sure to make suggestions for impressions that you would like to see us fail at trying. I do not do voice and 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 none of the easy ones. Let's stay away from Bill Cosby and Owen Wilson, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, I don't want to do that. You know, and don't I, I yeah. feel like we like I, you you're right to say we should stay away from the easy ones, but I feel like Bill Cosby gets like a special dispensation <laughs> for being a rapist. Okay, like okay. Bill Cosby always gets to be made fun of forever. Infinity. Right. Yeah. I just don't want people suggesting things like Mariska Hargitay. Like, I don't know. How <laughs> We're not going to even be able to get close on that one. We so. could just, each of us have to do a Bill Cosby attached <laughs> to the different one we have to do. All right. Well, I think if you, I think you should still do the easy ones, but it's got to be like, like uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger at a spelling bee. You know, like <laughs> something that's like out Put a situation on it. Yeah. Uh, that voice right there brought to you by our extra special guest today, joining us on the Jimmy Curve. He is Stephen Smith. Yeah, you're hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah. Stephen Smith, how are you doing? I'm doing all right. <laughs> doing Fine. All right. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Let's get into it. Let's get into you. Let's get deep inside Stephen Smith. Good, because I'm constipated. If we, what will we, oh, so we know what we'll find in there. Mm -hmm. Here's the first question I want to ask you, Stephen. Do you feel like you are most known as a musician who does comedy, as a comedian who plays music, or as a guy who owns a Batman suit? Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> probably the latter. The guy who owns a... <laughs> Which is like the saddest thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hey, hey, there's no shame in that. There's a lot of people in Times Square who've made a good living. That's right? right. An honest living. That's right. As Batman. Yeah. What led to your purchase of this hyper-accurate Batman costume? Um, I went to a store and I was like, well, I want to be Batman. There's a $20 <laughs> suit or there's a $300 suit and I've got $350 in my bank account. So you bought them both. I, no, no, I just <laughs> bought the three hundred dollar one because I was oh. like, I need gas and food. <laughs> Very cool. I've seen what I assume to be a feeling of, well, now I have to wear this whenever I perform and do this bit all the time because it started out as part of a uh, a fantasy nerd roast, right? Surprisingly, I've only worn it three times. Oh, though. really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you. Well, I I've been there at all. Like, yeah, those are the last three times I saw you. So it just in my mind, I was like, Stephen is walking around in this costume. <laughs> yeah, yeah, all the time. No, it's uh... so 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 far. You've spent one hundred dollars per performance. Yeah. On this. Yeah. So <laughs> you one time it was a uh, what's the uh, they do the comedy comp at the waiting room the battle royale battle royale it's like yeah. one of my favorite shows and I was like I just kind of want to spice it up I was like I didn't know if it'd be cheating so I texted Ryan De La Garza I was like do you care if I do Batman he's like no I'd love it if comedians <laughs> like shook it up more and I had all these jokes that I was like so excited for. <laughs> And then I just got taken out in the first round. <laughs> I was just like, this is really sad. <laughs> but like, I just went and changed. I was like, I just really hope no one knows it was me. But it's like, 
<laughs> they know. I like. I had a beard at that time, and a freaking gut. That, had, and the only thing has changed is I've trimmed my beard. So that's <laughs> well. Also, there's a piece of paper on every table that says Stephen Smith. Yeah, that yeah. Time no, slot. that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the other thing. What like your name's pretty common. Like I hate you, that. Yeah. yeah. You ever thought about like? I thought not making it so common. <laughs> I know you. No, no, like, I know. You, it's just, I you thought like, it was you so... tried the whole like Stephen Michael Smith. Yeah, yeah. It just doesn't work. It's like it's still too common. It changes it from like ten million Stephen Smiths, and I just put the Stephen Michael Smith. It changes it to five million Stephen Michael Smiths. Right. <laughs> yeah. So like it just it really. I, that's the thing. It's like I just kind of cringe every time I'm like, oh, change my name. You I know, hate. Like, I hate it when people do that. I do too. It's fine if they pull it off. That's great. But it's like I don't know. It's not like I really respect my mom and dad enough to give a shit about the name they gave me, but right. like I just don't want to like there's change a, it. There's something about that that feels super disingenuous to me, and that just really oh. like is off-putting. Yeah, because is I, your name really Joshua? I should ask you that. Joshua right? Wassler. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. So I hate my last name. I I really want to change my name, but now that Jimmy thinks it's disingenuous, I've never <laughs> met another <laughs> Vossler though. Like that's why would you have to change it? Oh. I have daddy issues. Mm. <laughs> Basically, I hate my name. Are um, the are the Vosslers a prominent uh, Lincoln family? Because I've I've encountered Vossler Street a few times in Lincoln. That's with one S, I believe. Oh, is it? Yeah, I believe it's with one S. It's did that street also want to distance itself from your father? <laughs> yes, by removing an S. <laughs> How many? No, I mean, like, what? What do you change your name to? That's the hard part. Well, like, you are, don't. You I, just like, quit you know, and then go off into obscurity. Like me, I I would keep <laughs> Joshua Vossler as my stage name, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then I would change my real name legally. Oh, that's so weird. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what, like, what, like, what's your middle name? A lot of people just go with the middle name as Daniel. The last name. So you'd be like, you could be like Joshua Daniels. So, okay. so you could be. I mean, you, if you were to change your name, it could be Michael Stevens. No, the one that I was gonna go with is Michael Bradley. <laughs> it's like when I was like All eighteen, right. nineteen, and thinking yeah. about this comedy thing, it was gonna go my Michael Bradley. So I would keep my stage name Joshua Vossler, but then I'd change my real name. It would be uh, sucks. Go ahead, Joshua Francis. <laughs> That's much worse as a real name. Either. Oh. All right. Well, well, I'm only, not very good at this, like, picking your fucking own name I've thing. never really had this. I'm, I don't know. Like, I'm not particularly <laughs> fond of my last when name, I, but I, I've never occurred to me to, like, change it. <clears throat> when I hear my, my maternal My maternal grandmother's last name is Francis, and that would be my closest, like, ah, okay, so there's actual a reason. real name. Right. I, there's, so, a, there's heredity there. Right. All, all, the only thing I can associate with the name Francis is the fat nerd from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. So <laughs> that's like I hear that name, I'm like Ugh. I was thinking. I immediately think of the character from Stripes, the Bill Murray movie. Stripes from, was a good movie. It was a good movie. There's a character named Francis, and he's like, but he goes by Killer. He's like, anybody calls <laughs> me Francis, I'll kill you. <laughs> he doesn't want to be called Francis. Well, I, you can pick anything you want in the world. Yeah. Why are we going with Francis and Bradley? Like, you could call yourself, like, Stephen Godzilla Jetpack or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah, especially if it's just a stage name. You make it whatever you want. Make it super badass. Super B.A., you know? I yeah. guess I just gave up. <laughs> I just didn't really care. I was like, I went to comedy shows. I was like, if I have a good set, that's cool. They're not going to remember me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> I, was, I don't know. Like, it's weird because, like, I... I, there's, there's just never been a name where I'm like, I want to change it to that. It's that disingenuous thing, man. It's so the, the obligatory first question is, well, I we're about six questions deep because we talked about names for a while, but what got you started in comedy? Why comedy? I don't know. I just don't think I was really happy. And then I was like, <laughs> I want to do this. <laughs> I, I, Lo I, lo I love the bluntness with which you said that. Like, <laughs> that's really what it came down to. Yeah. And uh, I first said I was really shit-faced, and then, like, I think I got laughs just for my drunkness on stage. And then I was like, man, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> and then I invited all of my friends to the next open mic, which is – I. it sucks because I invited them and then I just completely bombed. And I think some of them stopped being friends with me because of that bomb. <laughs> <laughs> like, I literally just – I haven't talked to some of them. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no, so I was... that, that's, that sounds about right for the arc of what comedy brings you. Like, I start out, I'm not happy, I'm going to do comedy, and now I have less friends. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was, I guess, uh, like, I realized this lately. I, I, I need music, and I need comedy, and I need one of them going at once. Otherwise, I stay at home and watch a shit ton of sports. Because, mm-hmm. like, I use them as an outlet, or, like, I'll watch, like, 30 for 30s, or, like, just... Like I'll binge on things like Daredevil. Yeah, those are all of those things are amazing. They are, but it's like I just feel like this whole like I'm not like accomplished anything. Right. And then like I need to go. I don't know. Maybe it's like narcissistic, but fulfill like it gets some type of recognition for me to go. Okay, I can I can go the next week. The difference. And it's between, not like yeah. I'm not like talking about taking myself out or anything like right. that. It's never been like that. But it's like so to go. I can at least like um not freak out at work at somebody i don't know the difference between you and me is that feeling of needing to do something i also sit home and binge watch daredevil and 30 for 30s and i'm perfectly content yeah going out and doing comedy always feels like a burden to me i'm always like i mean "Ah." it does like i have to fight i have to fight to get here yeah because i was like i could just tell my grandma died again or something (laughs) (laughs) and like just like and they'd be like i'm so sorry and then i'd be like i feel horrible but (laughs) sorry guys my grandma died again (laughs) you didn't do it but i want everybody to that's listening to think that you were doing air quotes when you said freak out at work (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah, yeah. i don't it's uh uh like today i don't know why i just because i think i haven't exercised or anything like that so i haven't really like released endorphins but like some guy will call my work and then i'll just change my voice i'm like i'm sorry you have different wrong number (laughs) and i just hang up because i don't want to deal with them and like then they'll call back and they'll be like, I just dialed into the same number. Because sometimes they don't call back. And then <laughs> if they do, I'm like, uh, I don't know what happened, man. <laughs> that wasn't me. Um, well, I, here's the question then. Because I always have the feeling. I, n- I never want to do anything. Between something and nothing, I will almost always choose nothing if I have that choice. Right. It's amazing that people are listening to us right now. It like, is. That's a possibility. And one of the reasons that's amazing is because every Monday at 5 o'clock, I'm like, ah, I don't want to do the only thing that I'm motivated to do this week. <laughs> yeah. I started this podcast because I was like, I really wanted to do a podcast. And within a week, I was like, ah, oh, it feels like work now. <laughs> so... But I'm like that with everything. I'm like that with stuff that's enjoyable. I guess for me, though, like... Is it laziness or is it apathy or is it depression? I never want to go anywhere yes. or do anything. It's all yeah, of those yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cocktail of negative human it's, mo- humanity. I honestly, it's your... Because you don't get up and run and your body's like, well, then we're not going to do anything today. <laughs> right. But, like, for me, like, uh, comedy's not really... a like a burden just getting there is <laughs> right like right. same thing with music like because it's just you got to drag your crap to it i will say doing comedy isn't a burden it doesn't feel like work running a show kind of feels like work and i kind of hate that and i that's yeah, why i don't yeah. do it any like yeah. don't try to do it anymore and just like having a good idea to run a show i'm just like already defeated i'm just like <laughs> right like that sounds like a lot of shit yeah, I, we, where I could just like be invited to go on stuff and have fun and do what I like to do, opposed to actually be responsible for anything that might fail. Even you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't have to worry about that. I, all I have to worry about is my set failing, and I could deal with that. That's easy. My enjoyment of going on <laughs> shows, my enjoy- do it all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. super easy. <laughs> my, my enjoyment. I could deal with failure. That's easy. <laughs> Running things. Oh no. <laughs> Today, I literally was like, I'm going to go when I get off work and go for a run, walk my dogs. Yeah. But instead, I just stayed on the phone with my girlfriend and argued about wedding shit for like an hour. Ugh. Ooh, let's talk about that. Oh. You will be very soon joining the ranks of the married. Theoretically. Just, just theoret- <laughs> theoretically. Are you st- you're still waffling? No. <laughs> I'm not. Now, you, you've been just- in like kind of a long distance relationship, right? Yes and no. Uh, we've been together for about nine years. We were in, it was our senior year. We started dating. And then after that, she went to Creighton. I went to UNL for like two or three years. Mm-hmm. And then she came down to UNL for like two or three years or whatever. And then she's been at Ames the last two years. So it's only been like, uh, two years where we haven't been together. Cause she's right. been in Ames, Iowa. Like, Doing what? Uh, becoming a veterinarian. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so other than that, it really wasn't, um, 
that much of a long distance besides the last two years. No breaks, huh? Uh, yeah, we've had little, plenty. Little like, yeah. breakups, yeah, Just yeah. Little breakups here and there. Yeah, because I I've been with my wife since we were juniors, and we had a, a little little breakup. Yeah, and what I meant by that is like. I broke up with her for no reason, then felt really bad the next day, and then called her in the morning and said, please, uh, please take me back. <laughs> did you use that voice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Did you did you try and win your wife back as Randy Newman? <laughs> what would that What would that sound like? <laughs> Here, Stephen, you you play you you play Josh's wife, who he just broke up with last night, and uh, he's calling you to try and win you back, and he's going to do it by by doing a Randy Newman impression. <laughs> oh, ring, right. ring, ring. Hel- hello, hello, baby. <laughs> Is this the black man I ordered? <laughs> and see, <laughs> Randy Newman's white. <laughs> he just sounds black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That went instantly into a weird direction. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was hoping he kept going. <laughs> It's one of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage uh, talk done. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, yeah, well. Uh, Do you, you live with her? You live no, with no, her? No, no. Uh, oh, and you're This already... is kind of the irony of uh, the vet students there. They're all becoming, they're getting, graduating and getting their doctorate on May 9th. And they, most of them, I'd say like 80%, live in a trailer park. So it's like, I don't know, like, what Wait, what? Is. Yeah, there's like a trailer park. That lives by the veterinary uh, school in Ames, Iowa. And the, the trailer park has been like designated as student housing, or that's just yeah, it yeah. Just, like, this sort of formed uh, naturally. I think like the last like I'd have to say forty years. And uh, so what like they do is like Casey's selling it to another incoming veterinary student, and she's gonna move into the trailer, and that's what they do. They just stay there for two to four years, however long they're in vet school there, and then they sell it to another vet student. I don't know. I don't. Get, it's it's actually very. So it kind of so like this sort of this thing sort of formed organically. It wasn't like purchased by the school or anything. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she's living there now. Yeah, she's living in a trailer. Yeah. For how long? She's lived there for two years now. She's also she's wrapping it up. She's yeah. She's almost done. Yep. She's selling the and trailer. And then you guys are gonna get married and then move in together. You guys are gonna have a like a long engagement and well, kind of try kinda... the whole living and pooping in front of each other thing no we already know what that's like oh okay it's, yeah um i know when she goes it's right before her shower <laughs> classy yeah yeah, yeah right. that, <laughs> and, uh, except i'm like geez light a match if i'm gonna come here and take <laughs> yeah. a shower with you it's all steaming it up steamy, yeah <laughs> um so you guys have lived together like when we were she was down here in lincoln it was like we were at each other's place like every other night i mean there'd be like one night where we're fighting where we just stay mm. in each other's place or if i'm just gonna get uh, celebrate weed times with friends. Then mm-hmm. she stays, and I celebrate weed times. So what, you celebrate weed times. I don't know how to say things that cool things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but uh, <laughs> ironically, today is the day to celebrate yeah, yeah, yeah. weed times. Oh yeah, I have, yeah, I haven't for a while. Happy four twenty, everyone. Well, the three none of the three of us smoke weed, so it's you know I, we probably should have had a bigger pothead on the show today, but. Uh, you answered the call, so it's a dumb holiday anyway. It is a dumb holiday. I don't do. Do you do you ingest I don't, the, the, the thing, smoke like, of the marijuana plant? Yeah, on a regular. No, not a regular basis. Yeah, I don't. Uh, maybe you just kind of can't afford it. I don't think it's a dumb holiday. I just think like there's the weed culture gets kind of like annoying, but that's like the old grandpa inside me where like. Where it's like, get a job, cut your hair, stop <laughs> believing in your dreams. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm off to this open mic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I don't honestly think it's a dumb holiday. Because, like, if you're, like, saying, like, Valentine's Day is a dumb holiday. Correct. But at least, like, on 420, it's all about, like, hanging out with your friends and giving each other free, like, weed. It makes right. you feel better in life, whereas Valentine's well, it's just, Day... It's just a thing where you celebrate the thing that you like doing. Yeah, yeah. It's such a big... It's, it's Nobody, no different than, like, Super Bowl Sunday, I there's guess. There's no yeah. happy uh, alcohol abuse day. You know what I mean? Oh, that's oh, every that's, day, that's, though. Every well, it's day. called St. Patrick's Day. Well, okay, yeah. But they... I mean, yeah, exactly. And people that smoke... Or people that celebrate 420, they smoke a lot of weed all the time. That's, that's, there's nothing that's sin- significant about that day. Same yeah. with St. Patty's Day. Exactly. That's a dumb <laughs> fucking holiday, too. <laughs> well, yeah, but, <laughs> but at least...
least they die eventually. <laughs> well, we all do. But Cirrhosis just... of the liver. Yeah, sooner. You know what I mean. Yeah. But I mean, I'm okay with these holidays being made up because I don't have to buy anyone shit and stress out about, okay, this is really going to look lazy because I'm fucking lazy. Right. Right. And what I mean by real holidays, I mean holidays in which you celebrate the birth of our personal Lord and Savior <laughs> or the Easter in which we... Uh, celebrate his death, okay? God doesn't or make the resurrection. Easy. So those are real holidays to me. God uh, doesn't make things easy. And Thanksgiving, <laughs> and Thanksgiving, because just, God damn it, I'm a good American. You know <laughs> what I mean? Once again, for me, it's all food-based. Interesting thing, if you're a state or government employee in Nebraska, Arbor Day is a paid holiday. What, what is Arbor Day? It's where we celebrate the planting of trees. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It was. It's based out of Nebraska City. It, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> that's also that's also a stupid holiday. But at least that holiday has some kind of positive repercussions. Like Re hey, that repercussions isn't the right word <laughs> for that. <laughs> positive oh. reper. That's like. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of an that's, oxymoron. Yeah, it it's is. Kind of a that's uh, exactly what I meant. Okay, okay. Yeah. I feel like positive repercussions could be the title of Will's book or comedy album. Like, the, <laughs> the positive repercussions of encountering Will Doherty. Epitaph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's talk about music. Really How long have you been playing? You play guitar, right? Yeah. How long have you been playing uh, music? Uh, since I was like 15, I'd say. So uh, I I want to ask uh, uh, this question because uh, you and and Jimmy have both had or been in at one point bands, yeah, and done the the stand up comedy. Um, the stand up comedy. I, oh yeah, having done like both, I've I've kind of heard it uh, said by people, you know, kind of like people have described musicians as all wanting to be comedians and vice versa. Uh, is yes. there there there's like truth to that? Everyone in uh, my band. Uh, well, I know there's a couple guys in my band who are like, I'm fucking, I'm funnier than him. Like, I know that. <laughs> yeah. that's a, and they try to make their jokes and it's like, they're like the original like open micers where it's like, they're already cool with the comics who've been doing a couple years. So they just try really hard to be funny instead of just letting it come right. naturally. Right. So it's like, sometimes I'm like, oh God. <laughs> like, like guys let's just uh just click click for and let's go into the song like, <laughs> i can't and i can't really speak to that because when i was playing in a band it was long before i'd even considered that like being a comedian is something you can do i was playing music in high school but i didn't try comedy for the first time until i was 33 or something all of the people in my band wanted to be engineers <laughs> yeah. so that, yeah, I don't know. uh so steven you and i are on an upcoming show called the Fantasy Nerd Roast, yep. uh, which I'm excited for. I've not done one. But the idea is we dress up as characters uh, and then roast each other. And this one is Marvel versus DC. So we are dressing up as Marvel and DC characters and then roasting each other in character. I'm pretty excited about it. Now, you've done this before. Mm -hmm. how, did, how, did, how, how do you feel about it? these shows it would be a lot more what fun can i expect if i didn't procrastinate and know that i'm going to try to write the jokes day of <laughs> um are you just are you just gonna are you just gonna count on your 300 hundred dollar batman suit and your like gravelly uh voice to carry you through on this one that's what i did the first time and it worked <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, no i I have a lot of fun writing as like uh the batman who's first trying stand up and, like, <laughs> with all the confidence that he has, it just goes away because he's in front of people and he's never done stand-up before. <laughs> I, like, I, I've I, seen this act and it's funny. Yeah, I like doing that. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I, I never sound excited about things anymore. I, I guess it's like, <laughs> yeah. to me, it's like all wow, Saturday is. You're not even actually married yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I guess all Saturday is to me, like the way my life works is Saturday is just another six days until I have to wait until Avengers 2. That's, that's Saturday. <laughs> okay. Uh, all so, right. Oh, God. Can you do something for me? Sure. Okay. Wear your Batman suit to the Avengers. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, I wore um, my Batman suit after the last nerd roast, or oh, the first nerd roast to the Godzilla Midnight. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, 
Although they made me take off my mask. Actually, to me, as fun as it was, like, um, the whole nerd roast, it was more fun, like, when I was leaving the show and I didn't bring extra clothes and a couple of my friends uh, were like, let's go see Godzilla. And I'm standing outside waiting in my Batman suit. But I didn't want to take my mask off because I just didn't want people to see my face. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right. And it's uh, more it's like more, Batman. Yeah. It's at that point. It's more weird if you just have the Batman suit and no mask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> that would be weirder. <laughs> and I'm waiting to get in the car and I'm like, come on, open the freaking car door, man. Come on. And these just like, like what I can only describe as like frat boys. Like we're in like a Jeep and like stopped. And they're like, uh, hey, Batman, what's up, Batman? <laughs> and uh, one guy's like, what do you say, Batman? Like, just completely screw with me. And I was just like, like in the, the Batman voice, like, drive safe. <laughs> <laughs> you guys want to go do Jaeger bombs? <laughs> yeah. Um, but then we went and saw Godzilla, and I liked it, and then everyone else hated it. So. Yeah. I, lo- <laughs> I loved it. Well. I loved the parts with Godzilla in it. Like, I didn't care for the parts with uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Is that his name? Like, running around? Eh, there's a lot of people doing stuff. I was excited that Brian Cranston was in it. Yeah. And then he fucking dies, like, in the first however many minutes of that yeah. movie. I'm like, fuck this movie. <laughs> That's how everyone <laughs> else, like, felt, man. Oh, I heard an interview with Brian Cranston <clears throat> about... Uh, it was during the production of Godzilla. It was before anyone really sort of knew what was happening. And someone was like, and wh- whoever was interviewing him asked him, like, what he had been doing up in Canada. And he's like, oh, I'm making a movie. Like, what movie are you making? And he sa- his answer was, man, something about a big fucking lizard. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was a great. Was- like, he didn't say Godzilla at all. He said, I was doing something about a big fucking lizard. And then. <laughs> And that yeah. turned out to be he was on the Godzilla movie. Was wait, did he was he Disdain being was he like, being hilarious or did he genuinely not know? No. Yeah. He I, was being funny. He's a funny guy. Yeah. He's a yeah. super funny guy. <laughs> he was yeah, he was he was joking, but then he never unsold like he never he came out of that. Yeah, he never came out Fantastic. of that and was like, No, I was working on the Godzilla movie. He was just like mm, big fucking lizard thing. And then they talked about something else. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> What is what is Fantastic. Brian? I, and I was obsessed because I love monster movies. I was like, What is Brian Cranston in with a big lizard? That sounds awesome. Yeah. And then uh, I found out it's Godzilla, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh like that th- really? Like, what could it be? <laughs> <laughs> what could you know, Lake Placid three? <laughs> you know, <laughs> her or something, okay. or, you know. All right. Yeah, yeah. Fair uh, point. Boa versus Python. I don't know. Like something original. I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Let's do some news. Ooh-y. Joshua. 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 Bossler. News. Hello, everybody. Uh, here's a quote for you, Jimmy. Uh, what is dead may never die. Have you heard that before? Yes, it's from something. Yes, it's from it's it's the it's the epi- it's the third episode of the second season of Game of Thrones. It's the title of the episode. Oh yeah, yeah. Also, Tim Tebow is is back in the picture. <laughs> Tim Tebow is going to be playing for the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. I'm not sure how you feel about that, Jimmy, but uh weird. He he's, sh- gonna, he's he's Tim be- Tebow, he's rised again. <laughs> Yeah, Somehow. resurrected, if you will. I have, I, I have no feelings one way or the other about the Philadelphia Eagles. It's all a publicity stunt. He's not going to make their team because the the problem with Tim Tebow is and always has been, he's not good, and I he's he's not good but extremely popular. I think he has the biggest disparity between talent and popularity of any athlete, maybe ever. I can't remember there ever being an athlete I mean, so beloved who was so bad. He's good, just not in the NFL. Like, you put him in a college system, they're going to the national championship. Sure, he's athletic. Yeah. He has ability, but he's no fucking NFL quarterback. No. No. no, no. no. Never. But that's the thing is that that's, there are a, th- that's a thousand guys every year are good in college, not good in the pros. Tim Tebow is the, like, super Christian guy, right? Yeah. That, yeah. Okay, I, I, I just... I thought I might have had that like the reference wrong. Um, how? Why did he gain traction for being a Christian 
in a like mm-hmm. sports community where like 99% of everybody thanks Jesus for everything all the time. Um because he's white and attractive. It's kind of unclear. Number 1, he is probably one of the I don't know, 50 greatest college football players of all time. So like in college he was great. Yeah. And there was and, a good reason for him to have a following so, as so an athlete. He was popular as an athlete at that point and then he just became the sort of centerpiece for Christian sports fans because he was good looking and white, you know, and he also, and, and, and he like, even in an, an environment in which people thank Jesus all the time, like he talked about religion and still does more than anyone else, even in that world. No like way. Philip Rivers, way more. <laughs> are, you, are you being sarcastic? No. It's just that guy, like... I've never heard Philip Rivers... Philip Rivers and his wife are, like, just, like, culty. Yeah, they have, like, kinda. seven kids. Yeah. Or whatever. I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe there's not a better reason. Yeah, I just... I. It's because he's well-spoken. He's, um... Uh, not, like, yeah, he's just attractive. And he's, like... He's, like... He's what you want, like... Every, like, man or coach wants their football player to be like and what every woman wants an athlete to be like. Well, and Tim Tebow oh, also has... James the thing Bond. is, he'll still fuck the shit out of you in a hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing. It's like, I don't know. You see all of his, like, girlfriends because I have no time and Google this shit. Well, uh, that was the thing. He's 27 years old now. Yeah. And he, you know, back then it was like, uh, he's a virgin. He's saving himself. Well, now he's still he's still single. He's yeah. not that, saving shit. Is that guy still a fucking virgin? No, no, no way. way. But he, but he, no way. Yeah. So there are two important questions I think with Tim Tebow to break it down. Like number one, w- really, why is he so? Like, how did he get as popular as he got? Like, he became one of the most famous athletes on the planet, and he is a terrible athlete. Everything this, we've already said. But the, the thing but is, the, but the second question is. To what extent is Tim Tebow aware now at age 27 that he's not a good NFL quarterback? Because there's got to be I think at, he's at gonna a certain be, point. I, I think he's going to be – I know like there's some people who are like, uh, if you go away from a sport for a while, it takes you a long time to get back into game shape and speed. Mm-hmm. But I really do think the last year that he's had off, two years almost – He's really like. There's people who are talking about how he's, much he's improved at throwing, and really like hired people to make him a better passer. I think like it's good enough for him to possibly make the Eagles as soon as they trade Sam Bradford to the Buccaneers for the number one pick, uh, <laughs> to where he can make it. I he's just never going to see a snap. I mean, the, with the Philadelphia Eagles, like didn't the coach see like the Matt Sanchez, Tim Tebow? Like lineup before, like it was. Right. That's all been done before. The, and now Philly's gonna try it again. Good fucking luck. Yeah. Well, but I, I mean, whether or not he can make a team, I mean, uh, maybe I'm the one who's being cynical at this point. But does it matter whether or not he's good enough to make the team? No, like, because if we're talking about most, it here. Exactly. <laughs> if he's one of the most that's famous, popular there. athletes yeah. in the world, they can waste one slot on a football team yeah. to get a super famous guy and just have him around. Yeah, that, 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 the contract that, was only for yeah. one year, too, which yeah. most that, like good yeah. good athletes, good quarterbacks and things like that, you're going to sign like a multi-year contract. Tim Tebow, they just one year, and who knows how much. And, I, and I think, and I think most people understand that that is exactly what's happening. My question is, to what extent does Tim Tebow understand that that's what's happening? He completely understands it. You think? His, you, you think? He, you think if you ask, you think if you got him alone, well, it, like, and asked him, like, he knows are you that, a good quarterback? But he's going to try like, to prove no. them wrong. If Tim, he's he, got to know his agent isn't going to BS him. He's had if, Jesus in his life. He does not. Yeah, care. I, I disagree. I disagree. Agents BS athletes like that. All that's all they well, do. I get like every athlete, every athlete in a professional sport has been told you're the greatest player in the world every day of their lives since they were ten. His answer would be, "Well, this is what Jesus wants me to do." Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's basically. Right. I think you're that, right. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Like, <laughs> if even if he knows, he can be like, you know. I'm just well, letting, he's gonna say all the right I'm giving things. the opportunity I'm creating the opportunity for a miracle to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got another story? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, this is one's gonna take acting. <laughs> <laughs> Skip. <laughs> 
Hold my hand, Will. <laughs> Will, I'm going to miss you when I pass on to the other side. I'm going to miss you. But make sure you tell. Make sure you tell that you know who I'm talking about. Make sure you tell him that I will never forgive him. I will never forgive him. Oh, I'm about to go. I'm about to die. Also, Rand Paul 2016. <laughs> Too bad for John. Hey. Uh, <laughs> a guy that uh, died um, and is like a diehard uh, Republican uh, made sure that in his obituary that he, uh, it was said in his obituary, the family respectfully asked that you do not vote for Hillary Clinton in 2016. That's what, <laughs> what it said in his obit. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, that's, and that's what he wanted. That's why they put it in there. His, his obituary was, go ahead. That's. That's a prime example of the simple fact that just because you say respectfully in the sentence doesn't make it true. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to hear a debate where it's like a man was dying <laughs> in his deathbed. Do we? <laughs> right. You know, there's now just because of that. Right now, there's somebody in like some like Democratic headquarters that's going like. We've got to find a dead guy. We yeah, got yeah. to get out ahead of this Where's, one. Yeah. They are they are up on us on the dead guy demographic. There's a, there's a dead guy gap. <laughs> really, it's 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 beautiful in the sense that like this is could catch on. And who votes? Old dying people, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get a little slip your little uh, endorsement in, you know, on your way out. Do we even know who like the Republican candidate's going to be? Marco Rubio. Well, in we know Hillary Clinton Bush. is probably going to be the Democratic. Candidate. Do we know, like in the in the general election, who the candidate's going to be? Is well, that I mean, what you're saying? Yeah, because is I mean, there a front runner? No, because when we know Hillary Clinton is going to be the Democratic. Candidate. No, I mean in the primary you have several Republicans right, right, right. now, but no but one, the, none of the Democrats are going to beat Hillary in the primary. No, we don't know that. In the general, you mean? Do you think? Do uh, you, no, we don't know that. You don't. You don't think that Hillary Clinton is is for sure gonna be wait okay i don't know anything about politics so I, I, general is where there are two people and we vote for a president and yes. then the primary is where we decide who those two people are going to be usually based on party you base yeah. so you don't think that hillary clinton is a shoe-in to win the the democratic primary absolutely not no no, no. oh no I, I don't think she's that likable I think the more she campaigns, the worse she's gonna do. Really, she's one of those. She's one of those candidates. No, I think she is because of her name. Everyone knows they, her name. Yeah, everyone. Uh, I agree a hundred percent with Stephen. That that whether it's good or bad. It's the number one you know, most important fact that, factor. Like yeah, the fact that she, her Na name is already in our head. Her name will play a part. Tremendously. Her name will play a part, especially with her party, because they love the Clintons. But in a in a in a no, in they a, didn't. They were cool in with a, getting she, impeached. Democrats were? Yeah. I don't know. I think they felt like – I felt like they stuck up for him. When they had to because they realized, oh, God, we're well, about they, to lose they're, everything. They're always the reference. Democrats always reference the Clinton Bill, area. Bill the Clinton, Clinton area. Is, yeah. Well, yeah. As, as the area where they shined most recently. Like yeah. that's that's their go-to. You know, there's there's a there's a lot of respect in there for the Democrats with the Clintons. Now, as far as like a, a general election, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna get super fucking weird. I think, you know, yeah. because the thing is, is like, why aren't there any other Democrats throwing their hat into the ring? Republicans, there's like five or because six they now. don't because they don't think they'll be competitive. Right. They don't. Well, they don't. Also, she's a Clinton. You don't want to fucking piss those guys off because <laughs> right. like they they have a lot of power and influence in the political realm you know what i mean so like they they're kind of hanging back and they might i want i want to see another democrat i want to see if there is one if there's one that'll be like yeah i'll run against hillary right they all want a spot on that because if she you know she she, she i'm not saying she's not likely to win but I don't think she's definitely a shoo in. Well, there's no like the, the Democratic primary is almost going to be a competition to be her running mate. I could think. be. That's yeah, it could be. There's no like um, Obama ruined that whole 
new and coming out of nowhere shine that someone could do. It he's honestly, you know, way better than the, his predecessor. Um, but there's not as much now. Republicans even like, oh, he had no experience and he barely fixed things. It's like, well, anyone even with experience would have had the same results. Yeah, but but what experience does Hillary Clinton have? Well, she was a first lady, and then she was a okay. She was a first lady, so she was the husband of the president. No, I know, but I mean, like, it's way more experience. Well, that's, that's the that's as close to yeah, experience exactly. you can have as yeah. a threat to the presidency. Well, so uh, you, yeah, but Hillary Clinton, well, you, I, I, you're saying basically she has a lot of experience being a traditional politician, a Washington insider, a Washington yeah. insider politician, and I honestly think people don't want that anymore. I, I'm not saying she can't win. I'm saying she has a harder battle than she would I 10, think people 15 want years that ago. Again, because they don't. I don't think so. Well, it took Barack Obama, like, really at the near end of his last first term for Democrats to be like, you see, I told you you get stuff done. Whereas a person who's an insider, it could have been a lot quicker. Josh, who's the libertarian candidate? Um, there's no official candidates yet. Let's, uh... Sounds let, right. <laughs> let's, let, let, yeah, yeah. Sounds pretty libertarian of them. Yeah. Let's pick one. How about, uh, how about, why not me? I'll uh, run. Okay. Well, I, uh... Right in Jimmy Really Putnam. took him seriously. That's, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. To be honest with you, we're talking about Hillary Clinton, but that's super scary. <laughs> you, you being a president. Oh, me? Yeah. Oh, I can't think of anything worse. I can't think of <laughs> anything worse in this world than being the president of the United States. That may be the, the, likely the worst job I could imagine having. The likely it's kind of crazy, like, how literally I, I doubt the presidency is actually, like, if you took a poll, how many people actually don't respect the job? Intelligent people might, but, like, uh, you're walking down the street, like, do you respect the president? The answer should be, no matter what party or affiliate you have, should be yeah. yes. Right. But, I mean, that's the thing. It's, like, just such a tough job where it's, like, I, even for with, uh, any, like, president I haven't liked, I'm like, well, I respect it as a president, yeah. but I doubt anyone would actually – I bet it literally would be, like, 70% would say no. I think I, th I think you're right. I think 70% is maybe a little <laughs> high, but – like I don't feel, I, I I don't feel required to respect like to become president. You have to be a megalomaniac, and right, you have to have a, a pretty severe personality disorder yeah. to even want to do it. It's insane. No, you have no. to be an insane person, and I don't feel like I should have to think positively of that. And, and not, and not even, not even, <laughs> not true. even just to want to be president. But you're but also just the, like the one percent who might think that of a person to become president. Even just the technical nuts and bolts of the day to day aspects of doing that job, you have to be crazy to want to do that. To want to have every second of your day planned, and for each one of those seconds to be super, super stressful. And have like major decisions hinging on everything you do, like that. That's crazy. Like to the president doesn't get to relax for a single second for four years. You know, mm. you disagree with that? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. If you if you they, look at the statistics about the, the amount of vacation time, to, president to be stay. fair, I'm basing most of this on Veep, so I don't <laughs> really know. I don't really understand what I'm talking about. Gonna get shot. <laughs> In the fucking face. <laughs> <laughs> Just a. Uh... Uh, they get some downtime, and yeah, they're available. <laughs> but you know, it's it's usually when something crazy goes down. You know what I mean? Are you, are like, you... don't interrupt me while I'm doing this unless it's some crazy shit, and then it's some crazy. Well, shit but like, get... but but even but even they're down. I mean, I don't think they have any time to just sit around and watch TV. Oh yeah, I think. You think so? Sure. the The president, the current president, had time to. Uh, every year he's been president come up like specifically determine who he wanted in uh the nca uh that's uh, work bracket that's not relaxing downtime that's work that's uh, that's that's popularity Here's that's not that's, work that's, that's shaking, not work shaking hands and kissing babies is part of the job i'm considering that he's got people on his team who are like where he's like okay who should i pick i guess i here's the thing i think president obama really does love basketball but I don't think he's going to go on national TV 
He, there's no way he's watched Michigan State this year to actually get a feel of how they're going to do. He has not watched there's, a single game at I, all I, unless I bet, he was there with a camera on him. No, I bet he's like as a I bet he's been able to relax and watch a game, but not well enough to pick the NCAA tournament even better than any of us. Uh, to where I think he's had people tell him, okay, I would really – I like this guy, I like this coach, but what do you guys think? How have they been this year? And he's like, well, I think, you know, they're really good, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you should pick them over them. I think There's they have more downtime than you think. And if they don't, the president's like a really bad father. Because how can he, how, how much time, if he's that busy that he has no time to do anything else but presidential stuff, how's he, ta- how's he have time for his family? Oh, um, uh, they don't. Yeah. I don't think they do. It's not much, man. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, I don't think he probably gets more than five to six. Well, hours. If he, it's, it's not. It's not a nine to five gig. If yeah. you if you look at like uh, like the history of presidents, some have been a lot more lax than others. Yeah, you know they they didn't worry about every single little thing. Like Nixon, right. that's what he did. He was like worried about every fucking little thing. Had like everything recorded all the time. Thought everybody was out to get him, and like he was a he was a he was a crazy person. You know what I mean? Yeah, he was right about a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have more laid back presidents that just kind of go with the flow. What's going on, guys? You know, don't you don't have to wear a tie in our meetings type of person, and and kind of yeah. But that doesn't mean he's not. We're I going mean, out talking about golf scores and our handicaps, like. I mean, like that's, Lyndon, that's work, too. Uh, Lyndon B. Johnson would literally have people come in and have a meeting with him while he's taking a crap. Yeah. But that was like an intimidation thing, but also because sometimes he just didn't have time. I, 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 you're, you're, you're describing downtime stuff, and I'm, I'm saying that like him picking out an NCAA bracket on ESPN or playing golf, like the president doing that shit, is, it, that is part of the job. It's a, it's a, it's a facade. It's maintaining a face. I, uh, I don't. I don't. Popularity. Da- I, I don't have a problem with him doing it. I just don't consider that work. Like I don't have a problem with a president having some downtime. It, it is. I really don't have a problem with that at all. It is. But work. I think people. It's work think, if you have to do it. People think that they like they don't have any, and I. It's I think work that's because a it's approval rating. That's right. all it is. That, he's working his approval rating when he's doing the NCAA tournament, or right. or he's playing golf with people who need things and making deals. I mean, that's the I president mean, is too important. I is think what I'm saying we shouldn't care. Executive authority is crazy in this country, right? The executive, it's the executive, we want a king. The, yeah, basically, I and mean, the natural human instinct I think is towards that a monarchy, mm-hmm. and I think. Even though we were kind of different when in most countries when we, we were formed, like we eventually kind of became that. I just think we, we gave some of the saying like "God save the queen." We want that. What what's <laughs> what's your system, Joshua? Well, I believe in kind of like a checks and balances, like you know the three branches of government having equal uh, power mm-hmm. instead of like a really strong executive branch, uh, you know, making executive orders where thing where the Constitution says that. Congress, sorry, dude. Congress has to decide those things. You know what I mean? We're having a lot of influence on, uh, you know, uh, uh, the judicial system. You know, the the Supreme Court. Like that, uh, we're trying to take away power from the Supreme Court. Like it, they're all supposed to keep check of each other. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But we we want one guy. It's human nature to want a leader. You know what we should have. We should have your checks and balances, but then have a king and queen that everyone else who's dumb just pays attention to them, and that way, <laughs> like what England does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It, it's a, it, yeah, it's a nice like uh, have a king as a diversionary tactic. Eh, it works. Yeah, there's a we, we have a system like that, except that uh, the president is our king. <laughs> yeah. Do you think they really have? Do you think that government has any real power? Yeah, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Next, <laughs> <laughs> nobody's listening anymore. Yeah. I can no, guarantee no, no. You that. Do you have anything else? Here's the yeah. thing: we know, we know for sure that Barack Obama doesn't have any free time. Because otherwise, why didn't he answer our invitation to be on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, we could. I could talk about this forever. He, he'd had a, he'd no had one... a couple of moments to show us a fucking birth certificate. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. A senator, uh, Senator Jean Shaheen, has introduced legislation to help make uh, put a woman on a twenty dollar bill. Uh, cool. Under the New Hampshire Democrats measure, the Treasury would uh, convene a panel of citizens to discuss the idea and report back to the Treasury Department. An online movement that inspired the bill has an online poll that has narrowed the field of candidates to four. Eleanor Roosevelt, Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, and former Cherokee leader Wilma Mankiller. <laughs> My vote's for man killer. Where, where are you guys at? If you want to see how sad uh, this world can be sometimes, just start a forum on how you're for that. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, there's oh, my God. Like woman on the 20. Fuck that. Oh, Jesus. I, re I really like. Well, yeah. Like, to me, like, it's totally a fine thing to do. Like, I'm all for it. Except that to me, the idea that like they were putting forward was just, we just want a woman. Doesn't matter. Who. <laughs> right, right. But it should be. Like, I that's wanna, exactly like, what I they said. I just want like. Time. That's what they said. Yeah. I want Deborah on the $20 yeah. bill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a good it's a good like, point that feels to Look, me if we put them on the money they won't complain about the pay <laughs> <laughs> the uh executive uh director for the movement said the name of the winner is not what is 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 that uh blah. the name of the winner is not what this is about uh what it's about is showing that there's a, a wide support for a woman on our paper currency now, I feel that the $20 bill is perfect because Andrew Jackson actually despised any form of paper currency. He, he did not believe in a fiat currency or, or, or a central bank. And he's currently on the $20 He's currently on the okay, $20 Okay, all right, good, bill. good. So believe it or not, Irony. I think it's all kind of idol worship, but I'm kind of for it. I don't how care much if longer, it happens. How much longer are we even going to have paper money? Like... As I'd say as another it, fifty to hundred years. In, as long as they can print it, yeah, there will be there will be some measure of time where we have it, but it it's gonna. I, I mean, we're using it less and less every day. Sure, it, it, it's gonna be a while. Like people got drugs to deal. I mean, yeah, yeah. Right. We need paper money. Uh, no, I'm. I think it's great. Honestly, I don't. It's way overdue, but it's just. I mean, I'm for it as long as it's only the twenty dollar bill. You know what I mean. <laughs> Look, yeah, we can't be putting a lady. If they tried to put a lady on a hundy, you'd have been like, ah. no, that's no, Benjamin no, fucking no. Franklin. No. You're not taking him off a bill. Oh no, I, that wasn't my problem. My problem was if they tried to put a lady on the one. I don't want to be like jamming something into a G string and then have like a dignified <laughs> lady looking back at me. Like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry, man killer. <laughs> <laughs> give me a twi give me a twirl, baby. Now here's an Eleanor Roosevelt. <laughs> yeah, Rain and Tubman's. <laughs> <laughs> we only accept ones, twos, fives, tens, and fifties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on Rain and Tubman's, I think that's been a pretty. That's that's all. That's all you're getting. Uh, let's do some plugs. It's your. We got uh, we got the fantasy nerd roast Saturday April twenty fifth. This is gonna drop on Thursday, so this Saturday at the uh, Omaha Comfort Inn and Suites at uh, five p.m. We will be doing the fantasy nerd roast in the middle of the congregation sci-fi and fantasy con. Nice, I didn't know that. <laughs> 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 uh what else is going on? i'm on uh doom room next month oh and then we're doing it in uh iowa are you gonna do the one in uh iowa what the fancy <laughs> nerd roast oh i i don't know because i don't know where i'm gonna be i don't know yeah. uh may 2nd in des moines iowa we're doing this thing again so uh that'll be pretty exciting i haven't I can probably do it. I, I got to read things that are sent to me <laughs> <laughs> do you have anything else coming up you host a show right no Oh, you used to host a show. Well, like, I do, but it's, like, if I'm, like, really feeling happy, I'm like, okay, maybe I'll do it. 
And if this lasts, <laughs> like feeling lasts for like two or three days, then I'll contact somebody about setting it up. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, kind of maybe. Follow him on Twitter at. Oh, uh, Stephen Smith guy. All right, all right. You can catch it whenever he's in a mood. He'll tell you he's got a show. Yeah. <laughs> Did we? You know what's funny is I started a like a parody kind of a uh, Twitter account, and uh, I had like I think it was like. 300 followers and it was basically me just pretending to be a republican asshole oh yeah and uh like there's one of my favorite things is like there's this girl who like posted something on there like republicans need to stop doing so and so and like you know like work on ending um relationship equal pay for women Mm -hmm. and like naming all these great things and i just posted like on the account like well how does that help anyone and I just got attacked by so many people, and it was so. I was like, "Oh, there is hope." <laughs> and uh, but it was funny because like I was like, "Well, I kind of want to still have my own Twitter," and I had like 300 followers on this, and then I made my own Twitter, uh, my mm-hmm. again, and I frequently will get like added by people on the parody account when I haven't tweeted for weeks, and then I have my own Twitter now for my just myself. And it's like barely above a hundred, right. and like I can't get <laughs> shit for people to follow me. And I was like, I don't care. <laughs> this is, it's sad, but it's yeah, nice. Mainly because I think uh, I think today I tweeted like I'm not gay, uh, but I'd play with uh, Chris Pratt's poop, and I think that's why like, <laughs> I'm not getting any followers. <laughs> At least you know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the comedy of Stephen Michael Smith, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Uh, do you have any? Do you have any other shows coming up that you're on? What are you on? Um, I got a couple band shows at Sokol Underground. Your band? I should have. I didn't even say the name. They are called We Are. Yeah. And you're playing Sokol Underground. Yeah. And then. Uh, yeah, did, did you need to name that band after like oh, we're gonna make every single person who tries to look us up play a fun Google autocomplete game? No, we're just huge <laughs> POD fans. Like to where it's like we are, we are the youth of the nation. So we just oh no, no, I'm just kidding. You <laughs> should be better than no. that by now. I, yeah, I think it was uh, <laughs> my the drummer just sent us a design because uh, he's a graphic designer and it had uh, the word we are in it. He's like, this is what I want, and we're like. Yeah, that looks cool, man. Cool. And then we just never like thought about the fact that when we go on stage like, hey guys, we are uh oh, god damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so my yeah. first band in, in high school was called Subject to Change because we kept changing our name and then we just became subject to change. <laughs> Will, what do you got coming up? You got a Will Doherty Loves Company? Uh I do. Um it's actually that uh Saturday, that same Saturday the twenty fifth, much later in the evening though, so you can go to both. You can do both things, people. You can go you can go invest in what looking at Stephen Smith wear a three hundred dollar Batman costume mm-hmm. and then at- And catch Jimmy Putnam in a suit. That's true. That's what? also an equally unlikely yeah. scenario. Yeah. Um, uh, but then you can uh, bust your ass over to the back line. We're running a little late this week. It's starting at 10 p.m., uh, but that's because I got a, a couple of gentlemen from uh, Denver. Uh, we're doing a show in Lincoln that night, and I uh, convinced them to come up and do my shitty little thing awesome. afterward. Who's on uh, the show? Uh, it's uh, Sam Talent and uh, Nathan Lund, two of the Fine Gentlemen's Club those guys from are, Denver. Those guys are fucking funny, too, yeah. so that'll be a good we're show, super man. Super funny dudes. Should be a really fun time. So, backline on Saturday night. Joshua. No. <laughs> <laughs> at Joshua Vossler. Hit me up on Twitter. I'm almost at 300 followers. I'm pretty excited about it. <laughs> so you're, uh, reg- register to vote Libertarian. <laughs> and uh, vote Libertarian. Thank you. Oh, we didn't. there's one thing I wanted to talk about today. Oh, yeah? Go ahead. Oh, sorry. It was... Uh, no. Any of you guys see what uh, Jeff Fortenberry tweeted? I have no idea. Who He's that like, is. when I uh, don't have time to talk about Nebraska, and someone asks me what's ne- like, like Nebraska, like he was like, uh, corn, cattle, and football is how I describe Nebraska to people. When I don't have time to describe Nebraska to who, people, who is what Jeff Fortenberry? He is our U.S. representative. Oh, okay, for, yeah, Lincoln, for our district. Yeah. For our district. Oh, were people offended by that? I was. <laughs> I, I don't. Know. I feel like that's what most people in the country think of. No, I know, but that's the saddest. <laughs> like, wouldn't you want to like the f- yeah? 
I, I understand what you're feeling, but like he's not wrong. No, he's well. <laughs> <laughs> like uh, yeah. he should he shouldn't he should know better than to say that. Yeah. But like that's the most honest politician I've ever heard. Well, it's a jo- <laughs> I, I mean it's just a joke. Like he's it's just a joke. I don't think it's offensive. I mean he just it, it, the other option, if you're just passing somebody in the hallway and they're like, "What is Nebraska like?" You're you're, you're going to be like, "It's a state." Who's I mean, asking what Nebraska's like? That's what I said. <laughs> no yeah. one is. Yeah, I was yeah. like, "What person are?" Yeah, <laughs> like the only other, like a I weirdo. Just, I wanted this to be his like 420 where he's high as shit and just laughing his ass off tweeting this. The only other yeah. three words that could like just as succinctly sum up Nebraska is like super polite racism. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, like I mean, yeah. yeah, it's I don't know. It's uh, yeah. I just well tell it. I mean, tell it, Stephen. Well, you, I mean, you're a you brown. Gonna... Uh, how do I mean? Is that is that an accurate description of Nebraska? <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I I don't know. Like the thing is, it's like way to lose I guess the brown maybe audience. it's just yeah, yeah. I, I I don't know. Jeff Fortenberry, if you're from Omaha, technically he's not your district. No, he's not. Yeah. Um, you don't have a right to talk about this. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> Fortenberry, that's <laughs> our word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. No, I guess I'm just sick and tired of that being what described it. Because, like, you're in Omaha and Lincoln. It's not really that case. Well, okay. Football and corn yeah. and shit. Where, where's the fucking cattle? All right? All right, Jeff? Where's the cattle? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, Nebra- Nebraska um, beef? I mean, they have, there's a football team called the Nebraska beef. No, Val- I know. Valentine is like a Okay, huge, but here's the thing. Like- then maybe the thing is, is like, uh, if that's how we're described, we need to change. Like, maybe that's the thing. I think you should change it to football, corn, subsidies, <laughs> and then beef, and, and, subsidies. And, and, that's, and that's, there are a lot of states who have it way worse than that. Like, if, if they asked someone from Kansas about that, they'd be like, wheat, colts, that's about it. <laughs> Steel. And no school. Like, they wheat, colts, and no school. You know? So Steel, like, snow, and black lung. <laughs> right. That's what that in West Virginia. That's yeah. what they got. Yeah, I don't know. St- still mining coal. I don't, I don't know. know. I guess I just wasn't having a good day. I was just angry about it. You know. No, that's okay. Fuck that guy. And <laughs> thanks for listening to the Jimmy Curve. Uh, tweet fuck that guy to at Kill Doherty on Twitter, the Twitter <laughs> account uh, that represents the terrible thoughts inside Will Doherty's mind. Um, <clears throat> send us suggestions. For uh, impressions to do, uh, we'll keep that we'll keep that poll open for a couple of weeks. Send them to us on Facebook or at the Jimmy Curve on Twitter, uh, and have a good day. I- I'm getting a lot of a lot of shrugs, <laughs> getting a lot of shrugs from my co-host and my sidekick. So have a great day. I, I was I was done like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> And that's the way the cookie crumbles. Uh. Thank you for listening. So for uh. my co-host, Joshua Vossler. Ha. And my sidekick, Will Doherty. I do not want to be the least depressed person in a room. And, this is weird. <laughs> and our extra special, high-octane, super-energetic, <laughs> bubbling-over guest, Stephen Michael Smith. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> Adios. I am been your host, Jimmy Putnam. Thank you for listening. This is a song by Stevens Band. We are. It is called Reinvention. Thank you and good night.
steal so I could Thank you.